you have your Bibles, let's turn them to the book of Numbers, chapter 22. Numbers 22. Title of this sermon, if you need that, Mr. Kevin, it is John Cena's Donkey. John Cena's donkey. Because this guy, this donkey could see him. John Cena's donkey can't. You know? Can't see him? John Cena's donkey? Okay. But this donkey could see. Um, I'll give you some background on this. The Moses-led Israelites are in the middle of a 40-year wandering they had been freed from Egypt and they were getting to the end of it. They were almost at the finish line where they were going to finally cross over the Jordan River, go into the Canaan land, and receive the promised land. They were almost there. They rolled up on Moab and the Moabites were like, man, these folks, this is a lot of Jewish people rolling up all of a sudden just out of the wilderness. They're, it's like an ox grazing in the field. There ain't going to be nothing left. They're just devouring everything. They're using everything. They're going to wipe out the land of the resources. So the king of Moab named Balak, this guy said, "Um, I know that there is a prophet named Balaam. That's who we're going to talk about and focus on tonight. But this guy is a prophet. Y'all, he wasn't a, a Jewish man. He was just somebody that God would speak through from time to time. Okay? But he was living there in that region, and Balak knew about him, so Balak called him up and he said, Hey, tell you what, I want you to put a curse on the Israelites. If you, a prophet of God, would put a curse on the Israelites, then maybe we can defeat them. So Balaam, that word came to him, and Balaam said, Y'all wait here, let me go talk to God, and we're going to see. God told him, he said, Nah. You ain't going out there. Don't don't have nothing to do with them. So he told him, he's like, nope. God said, don't. So I must decline. They go back and they're like, he he wasn't uh he's not coming. So Balak said, I tell you what, all the gold and silver I got, something that I own has got to be able to get this man, persuade him to come. So he sends even more princes and, and delegates. To go see Balaam. So here's this guy that God talks through to certain people from time to time. He's living his life, and all of a sudden all these princes and whatnot comes up. It's like when Aladdin came up in, into the place. You know, there was all these horses and elephants, and they, they probably had a song about it. And he's like, we're going to give you everything that the king's got if you'll just go and curse those Israelites. He said, well, look, I let the other people stay for the night. I'm going to let you stay for the night. I'm going to go talk to God and, and, and see what he has to say. All right? Now, that picks us up in uh, verse number 18. Balaam answered them, and he said, Even if Balak gave me his palace filled with silver and gold, I could, do, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord my God. So in Numbers 22, 18, Balaam sounds and seems like a good guy, doesn't he? From what he said is that there, there's no amount of money that I could earn because if God ain't going to let me do it, then I can't do it. What he's saying. I don't sound like too bad of a guy. So he said, Stay here tonight as the others did, and I'll find out what else the Lord will tell me. Okay. Now, right here is where Balaam loses his mind and loses his faith, loses his belief, loses his obedience, whatever you want to call it. This man is cutting off. His connection to God right here. God done told him, don't go. Don't do that. Didn't he tell him not to do that? And then, then they came back again, 
and you think God's answer changed? Nope. Nothing. Malam said, even if he gave me all the money, I couldn't do it because of God. But then he invites them, stay tonight as the others did. I'm going to find out what else the Lord will tell me. That night God came to Balaam and said, since these men have come to summon you, go with them. But do only what I tell you. Does God ever change His mind? We have a God that once He says it, it's the truth, and He's not going to take it back. He's not going to change His mind. The situation ain't going to be different. You're not going to impress Him or talk Him into anything. If He wanted you to go, He would have said go. But instead, He said don't go. And now you're asking Him again, and now there's money involved, and what are you going to do? Well, let me check to make sure. He still don't want me to go. How many times your mom and daddy tell you no and you take that? You come at it from another angle then, right? It's got to benefit them in some kind of way that you go and spend their money, right? You don't need to pay all those taxes. It's almost the end of the year. Give me a couple grand, right? Charity. Make it to my foundation. Oh, that's the next big... You ain't heard about this, Jason? That's the next big thing. He has got foundation set up now. GoFundMe page. It's a whole whole setup. Yeah, you can cash app them, Venmo, all that. Foundation. Foundation work. And they run their foundation. It's, it's beautiful. I'm talking about philanthropy, charity, um, a couple of other stripper names. I don't even know what they are. But it's all going on. Imagine philanthropy being a name. <laughs> That's wrong. All right, Balaam, let's get back to you. Verse 21, Numbers 22, 21. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. But God was angry when he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. And Balaam was riding on his donkey. His two servants were with him. Verse 23 says, When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, she turned off the road and into a field, and Balaam beat her to get her back on the road. This is Balaam's personal riding for a wild donkey. All right? This is like your main car, your, your partner that takes you to and from Imagine if all of a sudden it just veered off the road and you got out and started kicking it. Stupid car. Stupid car. Why can't you go the right way, stupid car? You ever do that? Tim, you drive a lot of cars. You ever just jump out and whoop one? You feel like it? I have seen what? I've seen cars react in a way that it looks like they had seen the angel of the Lord. They just dart really fast, one direction or the other. Well, that's what the donkey did. He saw, look, it says the angel of the Lord, which means Jesus himself. If it was just an angel, it would have said an angel or an angel from the Lord. This is the angel of the Lord. This is Jesus showing up in the, in the road right here with his sword drawn because he didn't want the man to go. He told him not to go. He didn't give him his blessing to go. He's like, you're going to do it anyway. Just go on and go. And now he's showing up to stop him. And he can't see him because his spiritual vision has been impaired by the love of money. But the donkey sees him. And the donkey is scared of an angel holding a sword. So he jumps off the road. Balaam, he jumps off of him, whoops the donkey, gets him back on the road, and then the angel of the Lord stood in the narrow path between two vineyards and walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot again against it, so he beat her again. 
She done toted two whippings by seeing Jesus twice, and now Balaam's got a hurt foot and a hurt donkey. Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she just lay down under Balaam. And he was angry, and he beat her with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? It does not say that he was terrified, that he was sore, afraid, or anything like that. Homie just starts talking to his donkey. Like it's normal, right? I mean, he's already decided to go against God. He might as well start talking to a donkey. The donkey talks to him. What have I done to make you beat me these three times? He said, you made a fool of me. (laughs) Really? Bro, you're talking to a donkey. He said, you've made a fool of me because there were some guys there. He said, if I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, he said, am I not your own donkey? He might have said it like this. Am I not your own donkey? You know? Which you've always ridden to this day. Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? Ain't I Steve? Like Shrek, don't you? That's pretty close, isn't it? He called me a steam. Anyway. <laughs> so, the donkey said, I am your donkey. I am your donkey. Do you understand the level of commitment that is expressed from this donkey? I am your donkey. I mean, y'all, that's like a level of commitment. This donkey is letting him know, you you done beat me three times. I'm your donkey. You've ridden me for a long time. We know each other. How come all of a sudden I'm your enemy? I'm not the one who made the bad decisions here. I'm not the reason why I'm running off the road. That's what you tell cops. <laughs> I'm not the reason I run off the road. It was the angel of the Lord. <laughs> and a donkey talked to me. It says in verse 31, they, the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a sword drawn. So he bowed low and he fell face down. And the angel asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I've come here to oppose you because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me three times. If she had not turned away, I certainly would have killed you by now, but I would have spared her. And then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. See, his eyes were opened and he saw God. When you don't want to see God and you want to live in your sin, God will let you do that. God would let you not choose Him. But do not expect God to reveal Himself to you and help you along the way if you are turning against Him. God will just not let you see Him anymore. If He done it then, He'll do it again. And I believe that that's how God treats all of us. If you want a relationship with God, then look to God. To have a relationship with God means that you trust in God. You do what God wants. You don't go where God tells you not to go. You do what God wants you to do. You have a relationship with Him. It's just like being married. All right. If you are in a relationship with another human being, you're going to check in with them. You're going to let them know what you're up to, what you're doing. You're going to even tell them, uh, we need to make decisions on this. I'd like your, your information. I'd like to know what you think about this. You have a relationship. You're sharing your life with them. And God wants to have a relationship with us. More intimate than a husband or a wife because He knows our inmost thoughts. He knows what we're thinking when nobody else does. God knows you better than your spouse does. And He also knows when we turn away from Him. 
He knows when things get away from us. Y'all, this Balaam guy, he's mentioned on over in, in the book of Numbers. Y'all can read about him. Um, he dropped a little, little nugget of wisdom for Balak. Let me just sum up this, this dude's career. He does get mentioned in the Bible a couple of more times, so he's not as obscure as the guys I've been talking about. His donkey is very famous. This guy dropped a little nugget for Balak, said if you really want to get the Israelites weakened, introduce them to an idol and sexual immorality. Start letting them have sex with the Moabite women. That's what Balaam told. Y'all can find it in, a, later, I think it's Numbers 31. It's also in Revelation 22, I believe, um, where Balaam planted a seed that led to Israel. It was 20,000 deaths that they got. It was a disease that broke out, kind of like uh, some herpes kind of stuff. All this sexual immorality, everybody got a plague all of a sudden. Well, all of these people that were worshiping, they had let Baal come into the fold. Yeah. What do you think happened to them? Whenever people get pulled away from God, there's consequences to that. I don't know if Balaam ever got right with God after this. And this was a man that God was using and God spoke for. But he severed that relationship based on what he wanted more than what God wanted. The thing God wanted me to tell y'all tonight, quit shooting yourself in the foot. If God's trying to bless you and trying to have a relationship with you, he knows if you're serious with him or not. And if you're doing something that he don't like or don't approve of, then just... Just stop doing it. You know he knows about it. Just stop. It, it would understanding that level of accountability with God that He knows everything about us, and there's nothing we can hide. That should make it easier to to be better. I mean, if you care about His opinion, I don't think Balaam did. I mean, it just seems kind of like he didn't care. Every time we read a story out of the Bible, we read a passage of Scripture, you've got to understand something. God has not changed since then. Human nature has not changed since then. And if God dealt with this person, this character in the Bible, in a certain way, then there's a chance that He's going to deal with us that same way because He's the same God. He is still just as just as He was back then, just as fair. And if he was wiping out entire civilizations, peoples, because of sin, what makes us think we're going to get away with it? Might as well just fess up and say, God, I'm, I'm not running, I'm not hiding. I'm going to be obedient. Man, watch out how things get better. <laughs> Day, I thought I was going to go meet Jesus. We were sitting there with the door open, and the cat decided to jump on the door or something. I don't, I didn't, I didn't never see the cat move. But we have a deadbolt on the door. The door handle itself don't even work. It's just a deadbolt. It's, it's about as big around as my finger. But when you move that door at all, it shakes. Ryan, you heard it, hadn't you? It just shakes, makes a racket, right? Well, them cats made that door make that racket today. And I think I almost died. There is a thing that the kids have that is, uh, how is this thing? It, it's like it extended, it's about this long. And you can squish it together and pull it apart, and it's like a snake. It was laying on the bathroom floor, and apparently my britches leg touched it, but I didn't feel it. And this thing moved. I didn't know. I knew an Irish step dance. Um, but I did one right at the bathroom. 
I mean, it was it was jiggy. You know, a whole bunch of high kicking, high kicking, right? So I don't know. I'm 